thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you to everyone who is getting behind my campaign. Now, in the last few days, I have been undertaking the parliamentary equivalent of speed dating. <laughs> I've had a lot of good conversations with a lot of wonderful colleagues, and I've learned a few things. I've learned that many of them were councillors before they came into parliament. Many of them work for voluntary organisations. Many of them have run businesses, and some still do. Many of them are still pulling a shift in our NHS. And many of them serve in our armed forces and are veterans. They're people that want to serve their country. They're people that want to step up and take responsibility. And when I meet people like that, I want to know why. Why do they do that? Why do they want to take responsibility? Was it some experience in their life? Was it a, an inspirational person that they met? And when did it happen? And for me, it was when I was nine years old and I was standing on the hot walls in Portsmouth watching the Falklands Task Force leave Portsmouth Harbour. Now, I didn't know much about that scene at nine years old, but witnessing it and Thatcher's resolve at the time, well, I knew my country stood up to bullies. Yeah. And I knew that that was important, important enough for some of those warships and my classmates' fathers not to return home. I'd seen duty and service and sacrifice for something greater than ourselves. And it's the reason why today when people ask me about Britain and our role in the world, I say we don't need a new role in the world. We just need to be ourselves. We feel these values keenly. It's why we serve as parliamentarians. They're the values of our party. And they're the values of our country, too. Our greatest moments have been when we have been the living embodiment of those values. And our greatest failures were when we came adrift from them. Recently, I think our party has lost its sense of self. If I can compare it to being in the Glastonbury audience when Paul McCartney was playing his set, <laughs> we indulged all those new tunes, but what we really wanted was the good old stuff that we all knew the words to. <laughs> Low tax, small state, personal responsibility. Yes. Yes. We need to get back to that because we've got some really serious challenges ahead. We've got to stave off a recession. We've got to deliver on the huge ambition that the British people have, having left the European Union. We've got to catch up after COVID. We have a war. And we have a manifesto to deliver. And standards and trust to restore. Yeah. Yeah. British people are fed up. They're fed up with us not delivering. Yeah. They're fed up with unfulfilled promises. Yeah. And they're fed up with divisive politics. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we turn this around? Well, first of all, we have to admit that Whitehall is broken. There are great people that work there. But in my administration, you will see it look and feel very different very fast. We need to do some serious machinery of government changes. We're going to have a tighter cabinet. We're going to have ministers of state that have clear and timely deliverables and are powerful and can reach across Whitehall. 
and we're going to modernise government with the white heat of modernisation. Yeah. 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 We need to move at the speed that business and science needs us to. Yeah. Secondly, we need to build a modern economy. Now, you'll have heard pitches this week on tax and spend. I'm going to talk about growth and competition. My key fiscal rule is that debt as a percentage of GDP will fall over time. My monetary policy will be on controlling inflation. And our supply side reforms will yield a Brexit dividend on investment, infrastructure, incentives and innovation. Yeah. also need to let our citizens live well. From me, you're going to get a relentless focus on cost of living issues. I've already announced that on day one we are going to slash VAT on fuel at the pump by half, and we are going to raise income tax thresholds for basic and middle income uh, earners in line with inflation. Yeah. Yeah. We also need to extract more value. For example, through simplifying and reducing the cost of being tax compliant for our citizens and for business. And we need to get things to work better. I'm going to be putting power back into the hands of parents. Yeah. We are going to create personal budgets to allow every child access to their entitlements to subsidised childcare at any time prior to them starting full-time school. <laughs> and we are going to create some task forces to get a grip on the crisis and paralysis in accessing NHS services and yes. dentuses yes. 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 and also and vitally stagnation in house building. Yes. Fourthly, if we are really serious about levelling up, we cannot be limited in our ambition by what is in the Treasury's coffers. We have to get real about this. So I want to align government planning cycles with those of business and the charity sector which are already aligned. And that will give us huge opportunities to co-fund, to form partnerships, to do more for our citizens. And we need some national missions in this country that the whole country and every sector can get behind. And I also want to set up some social capital pots that MPs themselves can administer. You guys are best placed in your communities to spot those gaps and spot the opportunities, and I want to give you more agency to serve your communities. Yeah. And finally, I want all of our citizens to be able to live in safety and security. I'm committing to our manifesto commitment on defence spending and our NATO yeah, yeah, yeah. spending pledge. But I am also going to remove some of the strains on our armed forces and take tasks from them that they don't need to do. And so I'm going to stand up a civil defence force, as I outlined when I rewrote this country's resilience strategy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want us to consolidate and capitalise on the huge amount of civic action there was during the pandemic, all those volunteers that came forward to make our country the most resilient nation on earth. My country and our party has been through a lot in the last few years, but we have stamina, make 
no mistake about that. In that moment of crisis during the pandemic, the British public stepped forward. They were moved by the values of this country too. They are capable and responsible people. They expect their government to be too. Yeah. They expect us to deliver on both the mandate and the majority they handed us. I can and we will. Yeah.